What is up boys? Another episode of Farms Out 23, I believe. How are we doing today? My ticket to China is going to be purchased, I want to say in a couple hours, so I'm pretty excited. Definitely did not did not expect it, but uh, you know, here we are boys. I was a little skeptical if it was actually going to go through, but you know, thank God I've got a passport, I guess. So shout out to, uh, shout out to being Panamanian. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I'm just going to hop into a couple questions here because I don't know, I, I guess sometimes like I start these, I start these videos and I'm like, oh, like I know exactly how to start this, but today I don't really know. So we're going to open up with uh, Rafael Silva and he says, hi 12, I went for VIP 14, just like you said, I will max ZL and a 555 one Herman. Should I put more GH into Herman or should I start to keep them for a cab march? Generally, what I would say is 555 one Herman is probably fine. I mean, I like his expertise personally, but as I found for the vast majority of players, it's just not people's favorite thing. So, I mean, saving up and being able to put it into like a QB Joan March is probably the better move of the two. I would not overthink it if I were you. Take what you got and start moving to your next March. If you're having issues where you cannot like gear up your March properly and you have a bunch of extra sculptures, at that point, then I would consider, I would consider maxing Herman. But as long as you don't have like huge gear disparities, you should be all right. Next question is coming from Buddha4510. Definitely a comment from a truly new player. We love new players. Welcome, welcome to Rise of Kingdoms. I hope you're having a good time. Hopefully we can help you out here. Rock is definitely not for the faint of heart, especially for new players. Things can be found very overwhelming. So if you found yourself in this series, you're probably in a good spot. So over here we have, I've been starting and restarting until 200K power in two day stints of gameplay. My struggle is I started China obviously, but I do find myself not wanting to barb chain and just gather and just gather, gather and develop the account that way instead of farming barbarians. It's still recommended to go China and get the expedition rewards and use all barbarians. Or should I just go France or some other civ? I was thinking about starting Germany and get the free 3% training and build a great amount of gathering potential. One other thing is I don't really enjoy jumping kingdoms or sleeping the migrating of their long-term projects that guarantee stability. I would say jumping projects are absolutely crucial if you're going to start the game. You probably need to, if you haven't watched the beginner guide, you're, you're probably going to need to watch that. Not wanting to barb chain, you can make it work. It's just you'll be a more casual player, which could be okay. I would definitely start China and then I'd swap into Germany. France or some other civilization can come after your T5, but I wouldn't start with Germany because Germany will give you Herman. The reason why you start China is not because China is some super civ, it's because it gives you Sun Tzu. And also if other people want to help players like Buddha here, obviously this is a this is a difficult question to to conquer as he is brand new but um you know i'm i am uh reasonably confident in the chain gang to be able to help next question is coming from often muhammad shout out to all my uh, middle eastern viewers out there i hope you guys are doing well peace be upon you and all that i'm not sure if we see questions here somewhere else ah for sending questions but i want to ask yeah sending them here is completely fine i want to ask that well first of all you've been a great help to me in my rock journey and i love your videos and guide and opinions thanks for the wonderful videos my question is i got richard and i'm just starting the game how would it be useful in the game should i still play him with joan and use him as a tank i'm a bit confused by the multiple videos so if you guys have been watching my content for a really long time you'll know that richard joan used to be like a very good um, tank march a very long time ago nowadays we don't really use richard joan like that anymore what i would suggest is if you get richard he'll be he'll generally be good just for just for economical things right we're talking about like aoe barb chaining we can talk about as like a primary to sun tzu we can talk about like maybe helping you in certain events but in terms of like having like the the five march like powerball that we used to have richard is really only good economically and for like maybe kvk one and two so he's nowhere near as good as he used to be i think at a five one one he's still an excellent invest but i would not be considering going further into him he would be good as a primary to like sun tzu next question is coming out of v city romeo i'm f2p and have been hoarding everything i want to power up what should i use it on or should i keep hoarding i'm in a main alliance in an imperium kingdom so it's hard to get 20 gh ranks this is what i would say for the first bit of a kingdom there will be whales that want to win every single one of your events right for now just hoarding is fine as long as you can stay in the top alliance but the main thing is, is like, you have to wait for times where they're going to use their speeds and not be able to recover fast. A really good example of this would be like Zenith of Power or pre-KVK, right? If you see people using years of speeds for these events, you know for sure they will not be able to compete in the next Now or Never event, in the next Training Day, in the next Lord of War, uh, the next Game of Power, right? Like whales will absolutely blow when it comes to Zenith of Power and pre-KVK. So during KVK is a really good time to win some of these events, especially when it comes to fighting, right? Like a whale might fight really, really, really hard. And after fighting, it might be, boom, there's an hour never. Boom, there's a game of power, right? And it's your job as a free to play player to be like, ah, oh, this is my opportunity. I might be a little burned out from fighting, but I'm not gonna forget these events. Um, if you can do that, then you'll be in a better spot and you'll be able to win some of these events, which otherwise, you know, you'd never be able to touch. 
Next question is coming from Mito Elush uh, 5217. Hey 12, I'm a F2P low spender and I just skipped more than gems to do a 100 spin on eggs since I need to complete my archer set. Was it a wise move or no? I would say it wasn't. As a rule of thumb, unless you are VIP 15 already, 15 is where I'd probably stop investing in a VIP for some people. At, at VIP 15, you sit there and you think, okay, do I want to get to VIP 17 or no? And if the answer is no, then you can start to move your investments to other things. I mean, you'd still be doing 7K for each day more than gems because you'd still be buying materials. But of course, you wouldn't be doing the 50,000 every single time. I would say in terms of a holy nice treasure event the blueprints are pretty good right it's not like it's undervalued or bad it's just more than gems especially pre-vip 15 is absolutely crucial vip 15 is like completely game changing when it comes to how you approach fighting and what kind of marches you can use and how you can use them so i would say it probably wasn't a wise move but if there's ever an event that you'd skip more than gems for holy nice treasure is not a bad rule of like it's not the worst thing you could have done is as long as you got the 7k each day for more than gems it probably wasn't terrible but i would generally try to get to your vip 15 or vip 17 if that's what you're going for other than that guys that's gonna be it for today again you know we're go next week i'm gonna have to pre-record a bunch of videos i will be going to shanghai china and then i will be going to seoul korea if you guys are in shanghai china or seoul korea and you guys want to meet up or do anything like that, I might be doing a meetup with like a couple viewers from there. So if you guys know anybody from there that does enjoy the content and they don't watch these daily videos, it would be cool if y'all could just let them know. It'll be a little bit of a packed schedule for me, so I won't be able to spend a ton of time with you guys, but you know, a beer or two or uh, a soju or two with whoever I, I can find would be kind of cool. Other than that, guys, I'll catch y'all later. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day. If you guys want to help support the stream, please consider donating to the Streamlabs link in the description below. If you guys want coaching, remember it's 35 bucks a session for an on-stream, 75 bucks a session for an off stream you guys go to the discord in the description below and you make a ticket if you guys want to help support us financially you guys can always donate to the Streamlabs link in the description below as well but have yourselves a great one thanks for the likes the comments the subscriptions you guys are the whole reason why we get to go to china you guys are the reasons why we have a job you guys are the reasons why we are making our new computer you guys have done everything so thank you so much to y'all it is truly a humbling experience being a content creator for this many years for you guys uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful one thank you for watching bye